All right, guys, let's hop into it. What is going to be announced? So let's go ahead and guess, and you guys can feel free to comment down below so you guys can participate in this game, so to speak, here. So this was posted over today over on Reddit, and it got a bunch of traction, and some people want to know, obviously, what are my thoughts? What do I kind of want? So let's check out what other people want, and let's see if some of these are going to be aligning with what you want. So starting right off, we're guessing what's going to be announced. There's going to be a live stream tomorrow on July 6th. So starting right off, let's go over what uh, people expect right so obviously we're expecting to see the season one content the announcement of when it's coming out they said mid to late july but we're more likely going to get the exact date here and then so people expect to see more balance changes and on top of that quality of life stuff everyone has been begging for they mentioned that the gem stash tab will be coming in season two as well as the resistance changes so we won't see that yet and then there's the sixth reassessment of group packs in dungeons so i believe that they are going to be increased in the density so there's going to be more monsters to kill so basically more xp at the end of the day and then someone mentioned about the horse's cooldown being just completely removed and i absolutely agree with the cooldown on the horse because sometimes you have to dismount from your horse, cross a gap, because sometimes the horses can cross the gap, but obviously the horse can't go in the small little rope or climb up and down things. And it's just kind of annoying to have to wait for the horse's cooldown again after you just dismounted from it. And then uh, let's see what else. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight a few of them over here and let's see if some of these are going to be good. I didn't proofread all of these, but they're going to let us know about crossplay being enabled. Okay, this is just a meme. They found out that Frost Nova was overperforming, so we'll add an extra 10 second cooldown. Okay, this is just more of a meme, basically stating that more likely everything is consistently getting nerfed. And then they mentioned, we'll also buff Fireball by 1% damage. You know what? Like, looking at the other update, like, this was, like, the most recent update that we got from the game. There's a lot of, like, 1 to, like, 5%. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, it's an increase, but it's a small increase that's so small that it doesn't really matter for the large scale of the game. But, yeah, um, hopefully we can see more actual buffs. Like, for example, if you buff any skill by, like, 1 to 2%, people aren't going to be like, I want to build that. What you really need to do is buff it by, like, 30 to maybe... 50%, then people are like, wow, I kind of want to make a build for that. Even if they don't normally play it, I think that it'd be a good suggestion for them. If they just want to buff something, make the number big enough to where some people can actually feel a massive upgrade. Because if people were already playing Fireball, it's just like, it's like a 1%. They're not even that excited about it. But again, anything uh, above 30%, it could get a little wild, but I would say that's what makes us excited to hop into a season. That's what makes us excited to make a build for that particular item. A 1% to 2% increase, or, or even like anything under 5%, is just not super exciting unless it's like a multiplicative. It's just gonna be like relatively small, I would say. Anyways, things that probably won't get a second of coverage that that desperately need it. Okay, so this guy, okay, hopefully this one's gonna be a little bit more serious. Game filling up VRAM and video performance. Okay, so this is the optimization. And then the day, I, you know, I always think that that's gonna be a good thing. As long as they can get, you know, the game to run on more FPS, that's solid. I like it. And this person saying that gear dropping at character level 100. Okay, this actually is a pretty big change. So if you guys didn't know, there are Discord groups. There's actually different websites that you can uh, visit. And I actually plan to cover some of these in a video that I am working on that goes over how to trade items in Diablo. There's lots of different websites that do offer this. And this isn't like trading it for real money. This is talking about in-game you can sell your items for in-game gold just via the trade system and there isn't a way to do this in-game there's not like an auction house that we had in diablo 3 just to sell it for gold i think just the auction house would be an excellent choice just so we can consistently get gear but the problem is is that if i drop an item like right now you guys are seeing my barbarian that's level 81 if an item drops it drops at level 81 and someone that's level 60 which could use the exact same piece of gear that could drop for them they can't use it it doesn't have like a huge increase in stats um, so this would be a very, very nice change to have all of the items, maybe just maximum level 60. We can sort it by different like world tier one, two, and three. And at world tier four, I mean, you just need to be level 60 to equip the ancestral pieces of gear, which at this current moment is the highest tier. So this would be an excellent, excellent change. It would really make trading so much better because sometimes on the, any trade forums or discord groups, like if the item requires you to be level 100, it's just like, well, I wanted this to level up my character and I wanted to use it in between them. Or if you drop the item and you want to level it up uh, on an alt and you want to use that item you simply can't do this so this is good for not only people that want to trade but people that are just playing by themselves it really helps out with alts so this is huge uh they're talking about build diversity over here applying vulnerability yes this is a very very big thing so barbs as well as rogues can just automatically apply vulnerability so they have a huge advantage being able to play most of the core skills if your class is unable to apply vulnerability then you just simply don't do that much damage in the game and this is just the nature of how vulnerability 
ability works because it's another multiplier in the game. At the end of the day, they need some sort of easy way for all classes to apply vulnerability, or I mean, th at the end of the day, what they could do, the easiest really real quick change to this is to make all core skills apply vulnerability. That's like the easiest way to have it just kind of work. You can apply a vulnerability for like, let's say five seconds or something like that, maybe as like the third point or maybe as the second point to the core skills. The reason why is because there's so many core skills that don't have vulnerability and if it doesn't have it or if your build just doesn't have the way to put it in, your build just significantly is worse and is almost not viable. Like Sorceress, for example, you have to play with the Frost Nova in order to apply vulnerability for the most part. It's just too hard to apply and if there's like a chance to apply vulnerability versus 100%, it's just way too powerful. So yeah, I, I absolutely agree. This person probably has like most of the, the core parts that uh, we need to have in this game. Item diversity being poor because swords have crit damage and crossbows have vulnerability. You know, I've already talked about this in my video. People ask, are bows better? Are daggers better? Are swords better? So basically what it comes down to, crossbows are always going to be the best in slot. No one will ever use a bow that's good at this game. And the reason why is because you have, you know, damage to vulnerability versus damage to distance, which is the implicit on the item. I think implicits are cool, but they need to make it so like the implicit is viable. The damage to distance enemies needs to be scaled way, 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 way higher, like double, triple, quadruple stats. And even then, some people still wouldn't even want to run it because it's conditional versus vulnerable. It's pretty much built into most people's build anyways. So yeah, this would be a really great change, I think, in the game. So basically, just higher numbers, but they've also mentioned that maybe we could have different cosmetics. So it'd be cool to transmog, you know, being able to equip a crossbow, but then just use the bow's artwork because there's so much artwork in the game that literally doesn't get used because, if, again, if you have a bow, you just simply can't use it. It doesn't matter how cool the skin is because, well, crossbows are just arguably way better. Occultus Enchanter, no roll ranges on affixes when reloads. Yeah, so this is a big change I think would really help because right now what you have to do is you have to visit other websites. You have to watch YouTube guides. For me, honestly, this helps me out that they don't have this info because the people have been going to my videos for guides on like the rerolls. So I still think it should be built into the game, okay? So this, this actually hurts me uh. as a content creator because as content creators, we benefit off of this, but it should just straight up be built into the game. That's how I feel about it because yeah, you should be able to see what things can roll on what item. Otherwise, you'd have to visit another third-party website or you can watch a YouTuber's video to explain this. The stash tabs, they've kind of already had this in a data mine that there's going to be more stash tabs, but yes, uh, more stash tabs would be way better. I actually think the, the uh, itemization in terms of the colors, so I, I really feel like the uniques in the game should be like purple or green. They need a different color because uh, the difference between like this little like brown beige compared to like the yellow items in the game, it's legitimately too close to that as well as the uniques, which are like this orange. The, the, all the colors are just too similar. I don't know, maybe I'm colorblind, but I genuinely feel like they should be purple or green or blue, just completely different colors. I know we have blues as magic items, but another thing that, I don't know if it's, it, may, it might be in this guy's thing because he's, he's actually pretty detailed here. However, I genuinely believe blues and white items and on top of that, sacred items, why are these items dropping in World Tier 4? They have virtually no use. Getting a white item, a blue item, or getting anything that's essentially a sacred that's not a... a uh, legendary, it's completely pointless because you will never use a sacred item in World Tier 4 for the most part. It's like impossible. So anyways, sigils and elixirs using the same tab. Yeah, I think there should be a tab for each of your elixirs. And in fact, I think the elixirs should just be all of the items with the exception of maybe the sigils because like visually seeing them kind of makes a little bit more sense. They should just be all put into like its own category, just like all of the herbs. So we don't even have to waste our storage because storage is a huge issue with this game, which is something that you can get more storage. More likely it's going to be via the seasonal journey, or maybe they can start selling it. It's maybe part of their system to not have that much so you would have to buy stash tabs it's kind of just like you know it, it creates a problem so then you could use you know currency to maybe solve this but if they do give us free stash tabs that will be a nice addition to perhaps selling them but let me know guys how you feel about if they were to sell stash tabs in the game this early on as far as season one goes because we definitely need it like let's be honest we need some way to increase our storage and i don't mean just like okay we get one or two more tabs no i want like 10 15 tabs and if they're a couple bucks each i really don't mind too much but again let me know how you guys feel about that. Uh, next one is talking about why can't we refight bosses? I think this would be a really great change. Uh, being able to fight some of the bosses in the game, some of the bosses, in fact, I genuinely think that the Act 1 boss is one of the best bosses in the game for for the gameplay mechanic. I think it'd be cool to see uber variants of all of the bosses and them to have really, really good rewards. Kind of like how the Butcher just spawns in. Why can't one of the dungeons spawn in a super boss and if we fail that super boss, maybe it lets us fight just a regular dungeon boss. But if we can beat it, make it hard, but if we beat it, we get maybe a guaranteed random, uh, 
um, maybe a unique item. I think that that would be kind of a cool way to incentivize people to get some sort of excitement out of doing Nightmare Dungeons, that there's a chance that something else will happen. Because, yes, there's a chance for Butcher to spawn in, but is he dropping, like, you know, something super good every time? Not really. Um, but I think that it'd be cool to have that. So that's, like, kind of my suggestion with it, their suggestion over here. Uh, harder difficulties, uh, we already have World Tier 5, like, leaked. Uh, so I think that's kind of something to expect. Uh, ready check for proper use and support for LFG. Uh, you know what's crazy is, and I've talked about this in previous videos, Diablo Immortal has a better system to party up with people than Diablo 4, which is like the giant game, right? Hopefully this will come through time. Um, I feel like at the moment, clans is just simply not enough. Um, there's also something that I do want to mention that was shown off in the files. I'm not going to cover it in this video, uh, but there was like a file that had a clan stash tab. Is that something that's left over? But if we can have a clan stash tab, this would be awesome. That way we can share items with our clan. It would actually kind of give us an, an incentive to kind of, you know, check out what the, what our town has uh, for maybe a, a clan. Maybe there's certain little hideouts that our clan can actually participate in. And if we uh, group up, somehow with our clan we get some sort of bonus i don't know it could be similar to immortal where it becomes a problem because if your clan members aren't online it just becomes hey kick this guy out of the clan get this guy in real quick so we can get bonus xp so maybe uh there could be just some sort of better system uh with the whole clan system i think that that'd be awesome anyways horses getting stuck on things uh yeah there's a reason why when i'm playing my rogue i don't even use my horse because i have pretty much maxed out movement speed and even though the horse can technically move a little bit faster with its like little burst of speed, I think the horses definitely need a buff on being able to jump over those little skeleton walls. Like those things just are kind of frustrating. I understand maybe when you're playing the campaign the first time, it's like, oh cool, the skeleton trapped me in, or there's some sort of like, you know, barricade for the first time and then we get ambushed. It's, it's, it is genuinely cool. But if you've been playing the game for like, you know, hundred plus hours, it's just like, oh, we got trapped in by a few skeleton crew that's just gonna get one shot at anyways. It, it doesn't feel exciting, right? Oh, rifts. Okay, you know what? I, I I've mentioned that Nightmare Dungeons kind of needs some sort of other mechanic to the end game. Because if you're doing the end game, I mean, you're seeing like all I'm slamming out on my streams for like 10 hours is like, guys, let's do more Nightmare Dungeons. Sometimes we do PvP just to mix it up. But for the most part, Nightmare Dungeons are like the only form of end game content I really feel like we need some sort of a update to, not only just having Nightmare Dungeons as form of the end game content. Next up, though, as far as the PvP, oh man, this would be awesome, okay? At least as good as Diablo Immortals. I think we need another PvP mode. I honestly think the coolest and easiest easiest thing that they could do with the game there is the arena that was originally in diablo 3 there was an arena and you could actually you know party up with people and it was like a 3v3 arena i, I wish with our clan we could do clan battles this would be so awesome and it doesn't have to be balanced or anything but just a way where we can go in in 1v1s 2v2s and go to an area where we get to just battle someone because if you guys have watched my live stream there are times for half an hour no joke i'll go around i'll pvp and if we eliminate most of the people in pvp they'll just leave right because they're like okay this guy beat me i can't beat him they will leave the pvp zone and so like i'll go back and forth between the two different pvp zones and it can be completely empty and i'll, I'll legitimately will scan around for like half an hour no one is doing pvp i think it'd be really awesome if we could just hit q up for 1v1 and it would set up a 1v1 situation where it's just you know me and another person and say three two one and you fight and then that's it and you can queue up again or you can do best of five or best of three just some sort of way where we can just actually just play pvp versus running around looking for people and again it comes down to people just don't want to pvp perhaps because it's a system where you have to find people and also the rewards for pvp are pretty bad i think maybe if we just queue up for pvp at least maybe make it so like you have a, a daily once a day or something like that where you can go into pvp and you get some sort of reward for your very first win of the day or so something or you can get xp or the winner of the pvp battle gets to upgrade their glyph and the loser gets to get maybe a, a small amount of xp for a glyph just other ways to upgrade glyphs at the end of the day would be awesome uh a refund all for paragon boards honestly i don't think people are refunding that often but it'd be a nice change i'll think it's good and then I don't understand how everyone accepted six buttons max for best gameplay from D3. We had 12 buttons in Diablo 2. Let us use more than six buttons, please. A seventh ultimate slot could be good. I think this is a great change as well, having a seventh skill. Well, basically, just you always have an ultimate for all of your uh, builds because the idea of an ultimate for a lot of builds, they don't play it because the cooldown is just simply too long, so therefore people don't use it. Um, I think this would be a nice change for sure, though. Uh, having, I mean, the more skills, the better, the more diversity we can have because there's a lot of times where I'm like, I kind of want this skill. Oh, uh, I don't have enough room for it. But it could be a limitation for uh, maybe a uh, console. Like, I know maybe they could just set up so you can hold left trigger or right trigger and then the whole skill bar swaps, right? That'd be a really good change. There's a lot of games that do that already. Um, but nonetheless, season one, zombies, hot fixes that won't actually fix their uh, rampant DC freezes. 
yeah, you know, I'm still getting a lot of lag once in a while, uh, but this, I think that's due to server issue. When I had the review copy of the game, the game ran a lot smoother. I'm just guessing there's too many people online, so, okay. Um, they'll be discussing the in-game shops, remind everyone of its existence. Okay, so yeah, they're probably gonna have more cosmetics. I mean, that's kind of to be expected with a brand new season, right? Let's see, bag space won't be an issue because gems are getting moved. Okay, yeah, so they mentioned that that will be changed in uh, season two. Anyways, next up, they're saying where we're of X issue, X needs a buff, so it's incoming in season three, okay. Season one, double goblins. Okay, so I think they did this in Diablo three a couple times where they like doubled up the goblins. Goblins need a massive buff, and this is my input. I think for season one, please buff the goblins so they're ex actually exciting because uh, again, that was kind of a thing that was a really cool mechanic from D3, and I'm not expecting like Shaco to drop every time, but at least guaranteed maybe uh, a legendary or maybe a unique item. That'd be kind of cool. It doesn't have to be like the, you know, the best unique, but just something to be like, oh, it's a goblin. I I, I can't wait to see what I get versus, oh, whatever. It's not even like worth my time because uh, that's kind of how a lot of people feel about it. Anyways, I just want them to address removing the, inv the vulnerable spam Oh, so they just want to remove the text. I thought he was talking about vulnerable because we already talked about it. nerfs, nerfs everywhere. Hopefully, we won't be getting those nerfs. Uh, but on top of that, uh, we find that bone neckers are overpowering. I actually mentioned this in my most recent video, um, talking about like if you want to play bone spear now, maybe now is indeed the time to play it because well, it may get nerfed. Um, that's like the only thing that necro really has. So if necro loses bone spear, uh, good luck for anyone that wants to play necromancer in the next season. But more than likely, there's going to be uh, some newer legendary powers that hopefully make other skills a lot more. Or viable or the season mechanic let's check out the other one so uh, relevant to um, content from level 70 to 100 would be sick I absolutely agree from basically you know 70 to 100 it feels a little bit dry world tier 5 would definitely help out with this more like different powers uh, not only different items to achieve that can maybe only drop in world tier 4 uh, but just another way where we can actually gain more xp from 70 to 100 because the grind to to 100 actually just feels a little bit rough in its current state but obviously with world tier 5 this will help so that's kind of like something that will kind of already get addressed no acknowledgement of the issue on sork nor any fix wait what sork has more problems than any other class save for the necro to the point that i'd almost be willing to bet they're going to have to rework the class from the ground up there have been several video breakdowns and posts in going in great detail about Sork and Necro and what the core issues with the classes are. Some game-wide design decisions, but a lot of the specific to the class. They'll probably band-aid some fix on Season 1, but it'll probably be Season 2 or 3 before any real changes are implemented. Okay, so I'm guessing the, they're probably looking at the, the whole Ice Nova. That's one reason why I do, don't find Sork as amazing as the other classes, because to apply vulnerability, it's just a little bit more difficult. However, with the buffs that we may get, I'm really hoping that they revert some of the changes. Hydra and Chain Lightning were so amazing. This was like a, a lot of people's flavor of the month when they were playing in the first beta. Like Sorceress was just dominating. You're able to just have so many cool spells going out. And then when the game launched, uh, basically with the server slam, it just felt like a Sorceress, it wasn't like super powerful um, with the exception of maybe like in the earlier stages when, you know, your level like five or something where chain lining just bounces and one shots everything it feels good but then chain lining really dips off hydra was amazing and that dipped off so i think more build diversity for the sorcerers would be great because at the moment everyone's just basically playing ice because it's kind of like the only go-to build for majority of players so hopefully that will be uh, addressed okay stash base okay that's good separate tabs for nightmare sigils and elixirs okay we already talked about that um, no more item power increases again will tier five should be able to address some of these issues uh, allow us to refund Paragon. More things to do in Helltide. I think Helltide needs a massive buff. Right now, Helltide has about eh, maybe like 40% of the XP that you'd be getting from the Nightmare Dungeons, which is why I've been pretty much just playing Nightmare Dungeons because it's the only form. After you get your items 5 out of 5, what do you do? Basically, just Nightmare Dungeons. I think maybe Helltides, if a bonds, boss spawns in, It'd be really cool to be able to upgrade our glyphs after that, or if you do any of the events, you can get some glyph XP just so we can mix up the content. Again, comes down to that's the form of in-game content. 15 minutes of Diablo and from uh, wait, oh that's right, this is going to actually cover. Does it actually show up in here? Okay, so it doesn't show up over there. But a lot of the stuff um, that will be covered is not just Diablo 4. There's actually going to be a new a class announcement, I believe, for D3. Oh, not D3. <laughs> a new class for Diablo Immortal. So Immortal is having some sort of a uh, update uh, as well. So that's going to be kind of cool. Oh, wait, hold on. Season 1, Rise of the Shadow Walker. So a complete new region. Okay, so this is what they're guessing. Okay, I'll try 200 new altars of Lilith. Okay, this guy's just trolling. Okay, there's no way they're going to add more altars of Lilith. A new world boss rise of Shadow Walker that spawns every third half moon and drops two items that are not resource aspect. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of funny. New customization options for all, all classes only available on the season last and that costs $25. Balance changes to tune the level experience of the druid and the barb from 1 to 25 plus 3% on base scales. 
<laughs> okay, this guy's 100% trolling. A new level cap, 120, and no reason behind it. Okay, overhauling the mountain system, introducing Skoda, a premium mount in partnership with our sponsor, Skoda. I don't know what that is. But, uh, okay, so that guy's just making a, a meme out of it. Okay, so a unique drops rates nerfed. Gem, pa gem tab pushback to see. Okay, now this is just trolls. I want to get into, like, the actual good discussions. Okay, so now that we've checked out a lot of the other people's discussion over here, uh, they're talking about wanting the Paladin. I don't think they're going to add Crusader or Paladin and uh, we recently just covered a video talking about what could be the next class definitely check it out i'll pin it down below but as far as like what i want i'm gonna go over this real quick i want massive buffs to a lot of the skills that are underutilized i'm expecting to see a lot more uniques i want all the uniques in this game need a massive massive buff and the reason why is because there's so many that people aren't using and to have these items be super rare and they're just like absolutely strange that like some like lower the damage of your fireball yeah you get like them to bounce or whatever but like getting less damage is never exciting to see especially for a newer player in, in fact it should be going increased damage and increased radius and in more explosions more projectiles like that's what i want to see in a unique a fun awesome crazier way to play the game versus like i got a unique oh it's just more fodder for the garbage because it rolls with like let's say basic skill damage versus your core skill which is basically what you want to see in the game anyways Right to long enough, that's what people expect to see, and th there's some of mine. I'd love to know yours down below, but if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new here, hit subscribe, turn the bell, because we will be covering the live stream that talks about everything that's going to be coming out in the new season. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one. I'm signing out. Peace.